Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Right after NFL protests, American Sniper Widow did something that put them all to shame. American Sniper Jeremy Kyle's widow Teo Kyle just spoke out against the National Football League's recent protests against the national anthem. Teams across America began protesting the anthem en masse this football season, with players dropping to their knees while the anthem played before games. President Trump and others have been highly critical of these protests, slamming them as unpatriotic and disrespectful of a symbol of American unity and veteran sacrifice. Now Taya Kyle is having her say in an emotional op-ed for Fox News, originally posted on her Facebook page Taya Kyle American Wife. She started out by praising the NFL's true purpose bringing Americans together to watch a fun sport we all enjoy. You were doing your part celebrating each other based on skills, talent and a joint vision without regard to color and religion. Then she continues. Here is a longer excerpt and it's totally worth the read. Your desire to focus on division and anger has shattered what many people loved most about the sport. Football was really a metaphor for our ideal world, different backgrounds, talents, political beliefs and histories as one big team with one big goal, to do well, to win, together. It was simple, we loved you and you loved us, with all of our races, religions, different backgrounds and politics. Simplicity in a crazy world was pretty awesome. You dear NFL, have taken that. You have lost me here. She ends her post by asking the NFL players to roll up their sleeves and volunteer for their communities. You have a lot of strong guys, I am sure in the offseason a lot of them could build some pretty big bridges if they care enough to do the hard work. That would involve getting off their knees and getting to work though. Taya Kyle really nails it here. The national anthem is what keeps us together as a country not what keeps us apart. We come together as one for the love of the sport, and when we stand for the national anthem everyone is included. H.T. Fox News Breaking identity of Las Vegas shooter revealed, who it is is very disturbing. Stephen Craig Paddock 64 years old. White male from Mesquite, Nevada. This is the face of the monster who killed at least 50 people and injured over 400 more. 50 and 400 makes this Las Vegas shooting the deadliest in American history. Think about that. According to Heavy Heavy, the shooter is local and police don't think it's an act of terror at this point. They added, Stephen Craig Paddock, 64 had lived on Babbling Brook Court in Mesquite, Nevada, since June 2016. He previously lived in Reno, Nevada, from 2011 to 2016, and also had an address in Melbourne, Florida, from 2013 to 2015. He has also lived in Henderson, Nevada, and several locations in Texas and California since 1990. He was born April 9, 1953. Also, Paddock who had a pilot's license, was possibly going through a divorce and sued a Las Vegas strip casino in 2012. Stay tuned for more. When we know, you'll know. Share this and pray for the victims of this tragedy in Vegas. This is just horrible. Here's chilling video of Jason Aldean's Las Vegas concert turning into a bloodbath. This is the moment that Jason Aldean had to cut his performance in Las Vegas short. Aldean took to the stage at the Route 91 Harvest Festival and played for an hour until shots rang out. The video was taken from the back of the crowd and shows the stage before the gunshots sound off. Joy quickly turned to fear and panic as they realized that there was automatic gunfire and people began screaming and running for their lives. You can see people hitting the floor and attempting to run from being shot. There are at least 50 dead currently and over 200 plus injured. Jason Aldean has put out a statement about the attack. 
tonight has been beyond horrific. I still don't know what to say but wanted to let everyone know that me and my crew are safe. My thoughts and prayers go out to everyone involved tonight. It hurts my heart that this would happen to anyone who was just coming out to enjoy what should have been a fun night. Hashtag heartbroken hashtag stop the hate. Share this if you are praying for everyone in Vegas that has been affected by this horrible tragedy. Right after the terrible shooting in Las Vegas, Trump woke up and gave a message for all Americans. Last night will never be forgotten by anyone in this country as long as we live. A psychopathic killer named Stephen Paddock shot and killed more than 50 people and injured over 200 in Las Vegas during a country music concert. Rumors quickly began swirling. Who are Stephen Paddock and his partner, Mary Lou Danley? What was their motive? How did he get automatic guns and the training to do what he did? And the biggest of all, what will the president say? Well, the president has just left his first message on the horrific attack, and it was one of unity with the victims and their families. Frankly, this is the exact message America needed. A tweet can only do so much. I'm certain the president is hard at work to figure out what happened and find out ways to try and stop it from happening again. This is the worst mass shooting in the history of our country. Still, let's do our part to share this out and send our prayers and anything else we can think to do to help out. The people need us now more than ever. We are all Americans and will stand together in times like this. The horrible shooting in Las Vegas last night just broke the worst record in U.S. history. Last night was one of the most horrific nights in the history of our great nation. What we know so far is that Stephen Paddock used several fully automatic rifles to murder over 50 people and injured more than 200. It was this fact that broke the record. The Mandalay Bay attack has now been declared the single worst mass shooting in the history of the country. 50 was the number given when this article was written. The number is rising as the bodies are scattered everywhere in the area. Before this, Omar Mateen's shooting of the Pulse nightclub held this despicable record with 50 dead Americans. The attack happened at the end of one of the biggest music festivals in the country, the Route 91 Harvest Festival. When this article was written, the motives remain unknown. All we know is that Paddock will now go down as one of the worst terrorists in the history of the United States, no matter why he did it. Please send your prayers for the victims of this shooting and pray this record never gets broken again. After Cam Newton celebrated touchdown tonight, Everyone saw sick anti-cop thing in his hand. The Carolina Panthers quarterback Cam Newton held up a black power fist in the end zone this Sunday. According to ESPN, Cam Newton became the first quarterback to rush for 50 touchdowns in the NFL. Good for him. Cam Newton then held up a closed fist. He said that he held the fist up to signify black power. I did it to show black pride, because I am an African American, Newton added. I wanted people to see the joy that I go out there and play with. Unity is something that is going to cure a battered mentality in this country, he said. I feel as if we all stick together, if we all come together and listen here, speak, we can better help the situation. This is crap. Black power is all about black supremacy. I mean. Could a white person do the same thing and it be okay? We all need to bring back American power and get back to loving our flag. Share this if you agree. God bless our police and let's have NFL players start showing love for them for once in a while. Geraldo Rivera just destroyed the San Juan mayor by asking her one simple question. Puerto Rico was ruined by a Hurricane Irma. Then two weeks later Hurricane Maria came through and crushed the island. It was a monster category 5. I'm mad as hell because my people's lives are at stake. 
we are dying, and you, Trump, are killing us with inefficiency, accused the San Juan mayor of Trump on Friday. Watch what happens when Geraldo Rivera goes to San Juan. On Saturday, Fox News' Geraldo Rivera interviewed Mayor Cruz then immediately tweeted the following. Wow! That case has been wide open. It seems that Trump was right. These people are not helping and are just complaining. Check out what is in the background of the image below. There is nobody carrying anything around. Does Trump need to fly there and do everything himself for these people to be happy? Every patriot reading this needs to share this right now if you are proud of the job that Trump has done in Puerto Rico. God bless our president. Melania Trump just turned the whole White House pink for the best reason imaginable. Melania Trump is continuing an awesome tradition of raising national awareness for breast cancer by turning the White House pink for one night during October, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The First Lady released a statement on Sunday saying, During October, we raise awareness and encourage people to take steps to reduce their risk of breast cancer. I encourage all women to talk to their healthcare providers about mammograms and other methods of early detection and what can be done to reduce that risk. What a wonderful tribute from our First Lady! Recent data suggests that about 12.4% of women will be diagnosed with breast cancer during their lives, so it is crucial that women everywhere are aware of their risks and get regular checkups. Special thanks to Melania for bringing more awareness to this terrible disease devastating families across America and the world. Public support such as this helps bring us closer every day to finally finding a cure. H.T. The Hill, NIH